Welcome back to Undulations. Not a lot of fun making that tiny synthesizer model from Nanoblock, but when it comes to powerhouse sounds, my favorite tiny synthesizer is the Castle 1.5 from Basil Instruments. It's patchable, has different sound modes, you can hook other gear up to it, runs on batteries, it seemed like the perfect target for some new ideas that I've been having with Little Bits technology. So we're going to dig into the castle for a little while in this video and then add in the little bits and you'll see that they make a great combo. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so here's a patch that I just set up as I was getting ready to shoot this video and I think it gives a good idea of some of the flavor, the, the randomness in terms of uh, tone and tempo that you can get out of the castle and I feel like it's the time to say that this is a, a glitchy, noisy, uh, kind of random sort of device and I don't think it would be my go-to for making melodic instrumental pieces, but for fun, compactness, and the variety of things you can do with it, it's a real winner. Alright, so now I'm going to tear all of these cables out, and you'll get to hear it come back to sort of a ground state here. So what you're working with on the castle is a main oscillator that has a pitch and then a secondary oscillator that does a wide variety of different things. In this case it starts to modulate the signal if you have this wave shape dial turned up a little bit. That has sort of an FM quality to it. So I'd say that the paradigm of the castle is that it's a semi-modular synthesizer where you have functional modules as you go around the deck here, but you can't pull things out or put things in. I'm just going to start with using the LFO, the low frequency oscillator, and the triangle wave. This is a good way to learn more about the device. Ports that have silver rings around them are nominally outputs, and then the darker ports that don't have any silver ring, those are nominally inputs. I can take a thing like the LFO triangle wave, put that into a port down here, and if you follow the trace up there, it goes to the pitch modulation. I'm going to turn the LFO up, so this is turning up the rate, and then I'm going to start introducing the modulation. And then I'm going to turn the pitch up, so that this raises the whole thing to higher frequencies. Okay, but then you can modulate so many other things, like the secondary oscillator pitch can be modulated. Or even the wave shape can be modulated. Which I think is a really cool sound. There's more than just the triangle LFO. You can use a square LFO. You can take output directly from the oscillator to go into the modulation targets.
And so one last thing to try before we start talking about the different modes of this device is to put in a signal. This is coming from a Arturia key step. And uh, all I'm going to do is take the uh, CV signal from the pitch on the Arturia and route that into the pitch on the castle. And I'll play an arpeggio over on the keyboard. So this is pretty cool. This is a, uh, I've got an arpeggio coming in from the Arturia key step. That's coming out and going to the pitch modulation. So that's that faster melodic sound that you hear. Then I'm just using the triangle LFO wave at a slower rate into the wave shape to sort of give a slower sweeping motion to the sound. And so now I want to talk briefly about the synthesis modes on the castle. There are six synthesis modes and you can think of them in pairs, where each pair is one synthesis mode for the primary oscillator, one synthesis mode for the secondary oscillator. So the default mode is a phase modulation synthesis and a phase distortion synthesis. And in order to hear that, when we normally listen out of the headphone jack, we hear a complex combination of these synthesis modes. But what I'm going to do is pull out of that and come over to the I.O. port where I've routed the primary oscillator to the right side and the secondary oscillator to the left side. And so we're still in the default mode. I'm going to tweak some knobs here you can, so you can hear the different sounds. And that rhythmic melodic part that we're getting is just coming from the stepped output of the low frequency oscillator over here. Now, if I want to change modes, I need to take a voltage from either the plus side or the minus side. There's a static voltage source conveniently put up here on the deck of the castle and so let me tap the positive one and so you take a positive voltage and use that to set the mode to the second pair of synthesis modes so this is track and hold modulation synthesis in the primary oscillator and then formant synthesis in the second oscillator And then lastly, by switching this mode input to the negative side, you start getting into the noise that the castle can make. And so now we're hearing noise mode on the primary oscillator and a tonal noise on the secondary oscillator. And this is sort of a granular synthesis situation where the, what you're hearing is just the actual data from the flash card of this device of the castle. And you can uh, control the rate that that data is heard with the pitch and tomper knobs. And then you can also control how much data is actually looped through. So there's a whole lot to be explored about this uh, pair of noise modes. Okay, at this point I want to move forward to using the little bits with the castle. Okay, so I've got some little bits hooked up here. 
Uh, if you haven't seen a couple of my earlier videos on this technology, then it's probably worth going back and looking at. I'll uh, put some links down in the description. I've just got a power bit here. This is a sequencer bit that's sending out some different voltages. Those voltages are coming to this oscillator. I'm able to regulate that oscillator sort of like the depth on an LFO, and then that's coming out as CV going into the IO port on the castle, into the left side, and then I've got that going into the pitch and timbre modulation. Let me move this a little bit more to the center, and now I'm going to start to introduce the little bits effect. And so the little bits are able to introduce a lot of cool stuff. They're highly compatible with the CASA 1.5. But the thing that I'm really intrigued by is uh, trying to use the little bits to convert from audio to CV. So there is a microphone bit, and I'm going to hook that to the CV bit, and then just power that up. And when you're hearing that, you're not hearing the sound, you're hearing the uh, CV modulation of the castle. Okay, so there might be some way to get the ambient mic signal to work, but where this is really headed is to use the line in, because that is another thing that this bit has. And now I can take audio signal from whatever and uh, use that to generate CV signals that the castle can pick up. And so what you're hearing there is a modulation of the castle output that is being brought in. I've got a track running on my phone. It's going into the little bits over here. And then that's being converted to CV and then going in to the castle. And so that's the basic concept. I'm going to record up some sounds probably onto just a micro cassette recorder and then I think this might be a little bit more well suited to the noise setting for the castle. So after the outro I'll have a short little music video of that. Okay, I hope that gives you guys a little taste of what the Castle 1.5 is like and also shows you that the little bits are quite compatible with it. I'm going to close this video out with a little bit of noise. Thanks a lot for watching.